Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're dealing with a few issues that keep popping up age after age through reflection and examination of the scriptures. This time, how are leaders supposed to act? What's the role of leadership? Well, before we get into the topic of leadership, there's one thing that I think many people forget about leaders, which the Bible is pretty clear about. This will be the right of the king that shall reign over you. He will take your sons and put them in his chariots and will make them his horsemen and his running footmen to run before his chariots. And he will take your fields and your vineyards and your best olive yards and give them to his servants, your servants also and handmaids and your goodliest young men. And your asses he will take away and put them to his work. And you shall cry out in that day from the face of the king, whom you have chosen to yourselves. And the Lord will not hear you in that day, because you desired unto yourselves a king. But the people would not hear the voice of Samuel. And they said, Nay, but there shall be a king over us. And we also will be like all nations, and our king shall judge us, and go out before us, and fight our battles for us. 1. Samuel 8. 11b, 14, 16, and 18-20 Almost the entire 8th chapter of 1 Samuel is devoted to the longing of the people of Israel to have a king instead of God and his prophet Samuel, the warning that God gives through Samuel about what that would mean, and the people's obstinate determination to have their king regardless. The point we should take away from this chapter is simple. Worldly leadership of the kind that kings and other secular leaders represent was not God's idea, and he even warned people against it giving them what they said they wanted, only once it was clear they'd made their choice. Sure enough, God was right, and the first king of Israel, Saul, was a tyrant and a coward. Most of the kings of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, according to the Bible, with the good kings David and Hezekiah being notable precisely because they were exceptions to the rule. God, it seems, had originally planned for people to obey him in important matters related to the law, and to take responsibility for their own security and freedom the rest of the time, a much less centralized and more free way to live, but one that carries with it certain personal dangers that some of the Israelites seem to be trying to pass off to others. We can see this in the way they want the king to fight their battles. Kings were more known for fighting their own battles at the expense of the people under them rather than serving the people they ruled. That said, although these dangers exist for every group of people that accepts a worldly leader, that doesn't mean there are no commands that leaders are obligated to obey. In addition to the basic moral commands that everyone should obey, the Bible offers the following guidance. Now I praise you, brethren, that in all things you are mindful of me, and keep my ordinances as I have delivered them to you. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. 1 Corinthians 11, 2-3a Every leader is obligated to first obey God, mayors, lords, governors, kings, emperors, presidents, ministers, even the leaders of the angels themselves have an obligation first to do what God commands them to do. But Jesus called them to him and said, You know that the princes of the Gentiles lord it over them, and they that are the greater exercise power upon them. It shall not be so among you, but whosoever will be the greater among you let him be your minister, and he that will be first among you shall be your servant, even as the Son of Man is not come to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a redemption for many. Matthew twenty twenty five to 28 A truly great leader serves his people, not the other way around. Only the lowest sort of people use positions of leadership for personal gain or bullying decent folks. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking care of it, not by constraint, but willingly, according to God, not for filthy lucre's sake, but voluntarily, neither as lording it over the clergy, but being made a pattern of the flock from the heart. 1 Peter 5, 2-3 Good leaders won't impose unfair restrictions on people by force, or try to fleece the people of their money. God loves generosity, but won't smite you with lightning if you're ungenerous. A good leader should be the same way. Behold, the hire of the laborers, who have reaped down your fields which by fraud has been kept back by you, crieth, and the cry of them hath entered into the ears of the Lord of the Sabbath. James 5.4 
If you cheat people of the just wages due to them in exchange for their work, God will notice this, and you'll have a reason to fear God's justice instead of longing for it, so always be just and fair, giving people what you owe them. This one is applicable to any person in a leadership position. And the king said to Joab, the general of his army, Go through all the tribes of Israel, from Dan to Bersabee, and number you the people, that I may know the number of them. And Joab gave up the sum of the number of the people to the king, and there were found of Israel eight hundred thousand valiant men that drew the sword, and of Judah five hundred thousand fighting men. But David's heart struck him, after the people were numbered. And David said to the Lord, I have sinned very much in what I have done. But I pray thee, O Lord, to take away the iniquity of thy servant, because I have done exceedingly foolishly. 2 Samuel 24, 2 and 9 to 10 While it's good for a leader to know what his people need so that he can help provide it, it's another thing entirely for a king to seek more information about his people which isn't necessary in order for him to serve them. It's intrusive and dangerous for leaders to constantly seek to know everything about their people, especially while hiding secrets of their own. In addition, the decision of a leader to invade the privacy of people's homes shows a distinct lack of trust in God. Many leaders have no faith at all and become paranoid and aggressive in protecting their power, leading to tyranny, abuses of power, and the ultimate destruction of their legacies. These are some important biblical guidelines for leaders to follow. Next, what can be learned about the sword of St. Peter? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.